So I'm here with Cody Atkinson. He's an assistant coach for Everett. Um, Cody, I want you to tell me a little bit about what things you enjoy the most about coaching. Okay, so that's an easy question because I've answered it a million times. Uh, my mission field in my life is to help young men become adults. Um, and so for us, you know, for me personally, what I want to do, the reason I coach college baseball, you have an impact. You, you have an ability to make an impact that's more than just ball. Um, you know, wins and losses, whatever. I mean, who cares, you know? Uh, for me, it's kids becoming men, learning lessons that help them become productive adults, help them be successful fathers, um, things like that. And, and that's because of the coaches that I had when I was growing up. I mean, I am the man I am because of baseball. Mm -hmm. I mean, it shaped me. Um, and so for me, I, I try to give that back through the game. It's such a good platform. I mean, it produces, it builds character, and it produces the competitive atmosphere, puts you in situations that you can handle life. Uh, and that's that's it for me. No, no doubt about it. It's the, it's the answer I'll give every single time because it's it's what's most important. Um, you know, for me, the best things I get are the calls of coach. I'm getting married. Why don't you come my wedding? Uh -huh. You know, coach, I'm having a kid. You know, all those calls are the best, man. Yeah. You know, coach, I got this job offer. What do you think about it? Should I take it from former players? You yeah. know, and and the best conversations with current players are, you know, coach, what do you think about this non-baseball conversation? Yeah. And and that's it. I mean, the baseball is is awesome, and what we can do to to make players better, that's cool. But it's about making their lives better and so that that's what we believe in that's what I believe and now you are the assistant coach at Everett and you actually played at Everett for a couple years what is it like to go back to the school that you played for and, and kind of you know now you're the adult you're not just yeah. the player yeah it's interesting I actually I played football out of high school uh, at a D3 school and then I came into Everett and, and it's interesting because um, you know you can relate really well to the players but you have to put yourself in a different uh, position uh, my first year my very first year at Everett four years ago it was one year removed from playing I went from playing to coaching, um, and I was the associate head coach year one at 23 years old. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, I'm 23. There's some 20, 21-year-olds on this team. I have to be 30, 35. Yeah. I, I am not their friend. I'm not. I'm their mentor. I'm their leader. I'm their role model. And that just goes right back to you know being in the position I'm now. It's like, hey, I need to be a leader for these kids. Uh, I need to be a role model. Uh, I can't be their friend in no way, shape, or form. And and now I, I will say, I believe in having personal relationships with players mm -hmm. no doubt about it you have to you need to get to know them they need to they need to have a trust with you yeah. you need to go out of your way to know who they are as human beings um, not just products you know they're not just products to be placed out on the field and so with that you have to definitely draw a line of well that's you know you're crossing the line here we're yeah. not we're not friends you know uh, we are you know we have a solid relationship and we will for our whole lives um, but and it's interesting we got some young guys on our, on our coaching staff that just finished last year two of them and there's definitely Definitely, sometimes you see him at practice goofing off with the boys, and you go, hey, 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 none of that now, come on. And so it's an interesting dynamic. And then playing for my coach yeah. that I had. You know, he was my coach, and, and uh, he trusts me. You know, and that was the biggest thing for me is I came in with no you know, handicap on what I was doing. It was, hey, you take the hitters, and you take the infants, and you go. And you run the offense, and you do your thing, and, and I'm not going to ask you. I'm not going to say a word. And that, that was developed through how I played, I believe. Um, and there's a trust developed up there and it's cool you know for us it's pretty cool our entire staff is former players yeah uh, every single person in our staff played for coach Lacey um, and so that's a pretty cool thing it, it definitely it helps breed camaraderie yeah it helps us with our brotherhood mm -hmm. the fact that there's players that are now you know coaching and we have two players on our team that won an NWAC championship three years ago four years ago uh -huh. and and they can share you know they've been so so big in this tournament to be able to grab the boys because they know they were they're three years removed from winning this thing yeah and they know right away hey I, I felt your I felt your pressure I've felt it before I know what it feels like it's pretty cool we got you know we have a cool thing going it's interesting when you when you're around our team you're like well these guys are loose <laughs> yeah. I mean they are they drive me up a wall I'm like at what point are you guys gonna focus man but it's the type of group they are you know and and three years ago when we won a championship we had a group that was t tough focused no no you know no smiley giggly hey we're focused we're gonna go win yeah and this is the complete opposite <laughs> and you know my dad taught me when I was really young he always said there's a bunch of ways to win a championship yeah there, there's no just set way and so we're trying to find our way to win it hopefully we do yeah now your senior year you also played at Corbin University with your little brother yep. what was it like playing with the, with the little brother on the same team oh man I uh, I lived with him too and so for me it was so interesting of you know he's three years two and a half years younger than me and I leave you know and I went and I played at Everett and then I played in Louisiana um, and then I come back 
back and to play with him and you know really I had been gone and and not a big part of his life and we lived together and he drove me up the wall I mean I'm talking you know it's my last year of baseball I know it's my last year of baseball and and so I'm doing all the extra that I never did I'm waking up early and I'm going to the weight room before weight you know before the workout I'm doing extra I'm eating right and then you got this little freshman and he's doesn't know it doesn't have a clue in the world but it was awesome man I mean uh, he actually hit behind me in the order I hit fourth and he hit fifth um, I played third and he played first uh-huh. um, and so there's a lot of uh, us playing together it was cool every time I hit a home run he tried so hard to hit a home run <laughs> every single time and it came close a few times and so it definitely it made us closer uh-huh. um, I think uh, you know I think I was able to help him um, which I wish I would have had at a younger age of hey you know I've been through this this is my fourth year you know and and, and this is what you got to know. This is what you got to do. So it was awesome. He's he actually coaches now in our organization, and he gives back to the game. And and um, it, it was really cool. It was definitely big for our relationship, uh, being you know a lot of years apart. Now you also do a lot of hitting instruction throughout the year, throughout the off season. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I love hitting. I mean, I could talk to I could talk to anybody in the world about hitting. Um, I think my my Twitter direct messages are about sixty different people long of just conversations about the little tiny things, like what does the front foot actually do? You know, just stuff like that. And so. I, I, I'll say, you know, I'm working on my masters right now. Don't tell my teachers, but I spend more time watching hitting videos than doing my homework. You know, and you know, it is what it is. I, yeah. I have a, I have a, I have an obsession with it. Yeah. I mean, I think if you watch our games, you see me talking to the hitters a lot. Yeah. And there's not a lot of people that do that, and I know that. But we have a way about how we go about it, and we have an approach that we stick to. And um, you know, for me, you know, hitting is so mental. But what we try to do is we, we try to make you the best you. Um, there's no cookie cutting from us. Um, you know, you. Look in the big leagues and you see a bunch of people that have their own style and for me there's style there's style preferences and then there's absolutes and I believe that when you get into the launch of the swing everybody's the same Um, everybody launches efficiently and they're able to use the movement of body efficiently and athletically Um, and so for me I mean this is a huge passion of mine I think that the biggest thing in youth and this is just an opinion like I told you before I'm never gonna claim to be an expert but in my opinion in youth coaches are holding kids back um, they're not letting them move. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, it, my degree's in kinesiology, and kids need to learn motor learning habits where they can be athletic. Uh-huh. Um, and I see a lot of kids that are ta- athleticism is taken away in hitting. It's such an athletic move. Yeah. I mean, you have to be able to move athletically freely. Um, and uh, shoot, I could go on and on and on. Anyways, uh, for me, it's just such a beautiful thing. It's definitely the hardest thing to do in sports. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think the argument is always, you know, hitting a golf ball or throwing a completed pass as a quarterback. Or hitting a baseball and you know I can't golf I suck but I, I played college football and I tried to throw passes and hitting's way harder you know and so it's the toughest thing to do in sports for a reason and it's just such a beautiful thing of it's the only thing in my opinion you look at and you go you fail more than you succeed yeah you got to be a tough kid you know you got to be a tough person to handle that yeah. uh, and you see our guys you know I believe we hit the ball hard yeah. and so many of our guys will hit the ball hard and they'll do what they're supposed to do and it's caught and they come in like ah and I'm like hey that's all you can do yeah you know and so it's such a cool thing I believe hitting uh, really you know hitting on its own teaches life lessons yeah um, because like you said you can hit the ball hard right at somebody and be out you can hit the ball terribly and be safe yeah um, and it just you know it throws you curveballs all the time and it's just a beautiful thing I, I love watching it um, I love seeing how kids are doing things and the way pros are doing things you know I, I think I have 3,000 different pro hitting videos I know I checked it the other day I have 270 different pro hitters folders with a bunch of videos on them and you know I'm fortunate to work with some pro hitters in the off season and uh, it's just uh, I'll never stop <laughs> all year long I'll never stop thinking about it and it drives my wife crazy <laughs> so you know talking about baseball and life lessons what is the the biggest piece of advice you would give to not only high school guys getting ready to go to college but even younger players who are just looking at you know maybe someday making that step to, to college just play this pitch as hard as you can and when you win that pitch play the next pitch uh, regardless have a short memory um, you know we talked to our guys a lot about reflect after the game you you can make reflective adjustments pitch by pitch based off of something that happened but you can't make emotional reflection in game and so my thing
thing is just play hard and and have playing hard be what you but what be what you do. Um, I talk to our guys before after before every game when we do our flying V uh, routine and I bring them in and I go, listen guys, all it takes is all I've got and I can't promise you we're going to win, but what I can promise you is that I'm going to coach as hard as I can with the most with the best focus that I can have and and I know that you can promise each other that you're going to play as hard as you can and you're going to focus all game for each other and you cannot guarantee a win. And another big thing for us is you have to be willing to put it all out there and lose yeah. in order to win. And we believe that wholeheartedly. And that's why we can play loose. Because we believe if we put it all out there and we lose tomorrow, well, you know what? We did the best we could. And we're going to be upset about losing. We wanted to win. But at the end of the day, we can leave and go home. Yeah. And especially for young kids, the, the, th the worst thing to live with is regret. And when you go into a game and you're a little bit afraid and you make a mistake because you're afraid or because you're emotional, yeah. you're going to regret that forever. And if you make a mistake but you were focused and you were playing hard, you will you'll live with that and go, ah, dang, you know, I just, I just didn't get to that ball. And, you know, big thing for us, we talk about what you can control. Put things in your circle of control and put things out of it. And within your circle of control, you have effort, focus, and mentality. And that's all we talk about. You know, our guys go through a mentality class, and it's something that I made as my senior research project in kinesiology. We do it in the fall for 10 weeks, and the, the first thing we talk about is, is, you know, what's in your circle of control? Effort, focus, mentality. And so our focus goes, the only thing that can make me emotional is effort, focus, and mentality. It isn't outcomes. Yeah. And then you can be process-based. You know, there's so many people that preach the process, and it's so true. They just stick to the process. Yeah. You know, just do what you can do right now. Um, there's a lot of kids that worry about, oh, am I going to get a scholarship? Am I going to be good enough to make varsity and all this stuff? Well, well that's just going to drive you crazy. Yeah. It's just going to drive you crazy, man. And so you just go, you know what? Can I get better at field and ground ball today? Yeah. You know, hey, can, I, can I make a little adjustment to my swing today? And you just focus then, do the best you can. Awesome. Well, Cody, thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, yeah.